G'day Reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today on Gallery Aquatica TV, we're going to be doing a relocation of an established reef tank. Now, there's a few complications with this job. There are stairs involved, there's lots of corals. So let's have a look at the tank and see what we're going to be dealing with. So this is the tank that we're going to be relocating today. As you can see, it's a 400 litre uh, aqua reef. There's the tank and it's filtered with a sump underneath. We've got a Red Sea uh, skimmer, there's a chiller, we have wave makers and a single light unit. One of the biggest complications with this tank is the amount of rock and the rock has got lots of corella morphs on it and it looks really cool, they're, they're a really nice colour tealy sort of green corella morph um, but all of these corella morphs are going to be underwater so the first thing we'll do is start by draining water into barrels and taking the fish and corals and putting them in the barrels So we've drained out half of the water from our tank into these barrels and in the barrels we're going to put the corals and the fish but we've also put the biological media in this one barrel and the reason why we're doing that is to ensure that we don't kill any of the good bacteria in the system on the way to the next site. With these tanks there's quite a large internal weir that allows water to drain down into the sump. Now the problem is that that weir will hold water and if you don't drain out the weir, when you take apart the plumbing underneath, you'll have a big mess. So right now I'm just draining the weir out of water. It holds about probably close to 10 litres. So I really love the Corella Morphs in this tank. They're such a unique colour but I love the way they've just overtaken everything. You can't really see the rock through the Corella Morphs. But that does present a bit of a challenge when we're doing a relocation because some of the Corella Morphs have grown across two bits of rock. And some of these bits of rock are just absolutely chockers. And we always prefer for Corella Morphs to be transported underwater. So we're probably going to really be testing the amount of containers and space that we've got for all these morphs. So we have a medium sized flamingi tang that's hiding behind the rockwork on this right hand side. Now, just as I'm pulling it apart, um, it's going to be, well, I think it'll be a good opportunity to catch him. We'll see. Just chasing that with my hand and... Straighten the net. Thanks, B. <laughs> so, we've got a huge rock. We have to work out what we're going to do with this. I think we're going to need another one of these 25 litre buckets. Yeah. Uh, which is downstairs, but the ute slot feet. 
So whilst B's getting another bucket, I'll see if I can catch this clownfish, which is around this way. So I've been warned that these guys are mega aggressive. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage. See if I can uh, coax them into the net using my hand as bait. Oh, I only got one, but there we go. Two little clownfish, straight in the fish barrel. And one fish that I didn't mention, we've got a little file fish that was in here to eat Aptasia. And I haven't seen a single Aptasia in this tank, so he's obviously done a good job. You have to be careful with these guys because they can get their fins caught in the net. This will be a challenge. We've got a bit of rock which is about this big. It's probably going to be 15 kilo rock. I'm going to pull it out, pass it to Brandon. So here we go. So this is something that you often find in tanks that have been set up for a long time. This is a, a brittle star and uh, he's just been hiding under the rocks, scavenging and we knew that there was one but we've actually found two. We've removed all of the pieces of rock with Corellomorphs, put them into our barrels, and some of the pieces of rock which don't have Corellomorphs are in this box. Now, unfortunately, we're missing one fish. There's a bicolor Blenny somewhere in all of this mess. Now, the risk is if he is in one of these dry boxes, then it's going to be a problem. Um, so, we're going to have to look through these boxes and hopefully he turns up. But now we're going to finish draining the tank and uh, then we'll put it onto the ute. So we've just finished draining out the tank and Brandon is using the same hose with the same prime to drain out as much of the sump as possible. This makes it heaps easier uh, when we're moving the cabinet because typically we leave the sump inside the cabinet and all the fish and everything are in the barrels. So we're just starting to take that downstairs which leads us to the biggest challenge of the day getting the tank down the stairs. A dustpan is the best thing for getting the sand out of the bottom of a tank. Disconnecting the plumbing is often the riskiest point of this whole operation. When a tank's been stuck for quite some time, you'll find that the plumbing will stick, it'll be hard to unthread, and that was the problem that we had. The union joint hasn't come loose, and so we've actually had to unscrew the whole thing out uh, through the top, but we've got it. Now we just have to do the return line, and you might have to do it from the top. Are you able to? Oh no, actually you, oh, you took your turn pump off. Alright, this one isn't too bad. Alright, uh, yep. Uh, one of the most important things is to look for and find the O-rings. So they're a seal, like a, ga a gasket, on either side, top and bottom. 
uh, with both sets of plumbing. So there is an O-ring here. Can you pass me the... And there's another O-ring here. It's hard to see, but what I do to keep these in place is I actually thread this back together and transport it as one. And that way there's no chance of losing these O-rings between this location and the next. All right. Here we go. It's time to get this tank down the stairs. We have two people lifting, so we've got to work out the best strategy for how we do this. Now, what I have in mind is a three part uh, lift, basically. We're going to go from the tank in its current position onto this foam box. Now, foam boxes are actually really good for this purpose. They will hold a lot of weight if they're a nice new foam box with the lid on, most importantly. From here, we're gonna use glass grips and go down onto the veranda itself. We'll put a towel down so we don't scratch the veranda. And from there, we're going to slide the tank back. We're going to have one person walking backwards down the stairs lifting, this will be me. And the other person is gonna have glass grips and go down one stair at a time. So it's gonna be a slow process. We've got the trolley down on the ground, on the level, on the floor, to ensure that we can go straight onto it. But, so always hard to know if how well this is gonna work. So we'll, we'll give it a go and hopefully we don't break a tank. Stage one is a success. These glass grips are rated to 300 kilos each. So with the four of them, it's a very safe way to move the tank. As long as the glass is clean enough that the suction holds. We'll see. All right, so now we're going down onto this towel. Let me want to walk around that. It's interesting how often it happens that I plan to go down one step at a time, but in the end, we just go, in, we go all in one, uh, one fluid motion. And the reason why it works is because the glass grips allow the person at the top to have a, an angle that doesn't cause them to bend over, and the person at the back just carries high. So uh, there we go, we did it. We're just debating about the best way to clean inside the weir. There's a really thick layer of detritus and it's sludgy and whilst it's not a huge issue for the tank, it makes it very difficult to get those O-rings, those grommets to seal uh, if you've got lots of detritus in there. So we're gonna put the tank on its base on the grass and hose it out and hopefully we can get all of it out. All right. It always comes down to this, the decision as to whether or not you take the sump out. It takes an extra 10, 15 minutes to take the sump out because the easiest way to do it is to take the supporting leg off. Um, however, it does make it a lot easier with the cabinet and given we've got the stairs to contend with, I think it's probably the way to go. Luckily we're not too pushed for time today. We've decided we're going to take the sump out and the sump does fit out 
without taking this out, but it's easier, I find, just to take this middle leg out. So, we'll do that, and then it'll be very easy to carry this down the stairs. So that was very easy. I think we made the right choice taking the sump out. So we'll just bring the last of the stuff downstairs and we'll load up and get going. If you are careful with your technique when lifting a tank like this, at no point do you ever really need to lift it fully without uh, glass grips or trolleys or anything like that. And, and that's how we've done it. We, we haven't really lifted this tank very much at all, but we've got it loaded up and now we just need to tie it down. Right, here we go. How has it all gone? Looks good. So we put heaps of ratchets over, there's Oki straps, it's all really well tied down. We've got foam lids in between the tank and the cabinet and the trailer. So, looks pretty good. Check this out, around the back. We're gonna give it a bit of a clean out, but uh, look at the salt creep. It's not unusual for these filters. Those protein skimmers can be a little bit, uh, a little bit messy. So we're just gonna sweep this out before we set it back up again. So it's a very good location for the tank in that we've got power points, nice open wall. Probably have to do something about the framed something or other up there. Um, but we're gonna put the sump back in and this bracing leg on before we do anything else. So the trick with getting a relatively large tank off the trailer is to pull it out as far as possible so you've only got a small amount of the edge of the tank still in the trailer, lift it up and push in the trolley. So, as soon as Brandon arrives, we'll do that. See how easy it is with these aqua reefs. They don't have a, uh, well, because they've got this base here, you can just slide it straight on, and they don't have a recessed cabinet, so it makes it very, very easy. And this trolley is pretty much the perfect height for it. So it's time to put the plumbing back in place. Now we've cleaned inside the weir, we've cleaned the actual pieces of plumbing. And so hopefully there's not going to be any grit or grime or anything which is going to cause a slow leak. And most importantly, we've got the two O-rings, one on that side, one on this side. We just have to screw it in now. So again, just I, well, 
working out. You've got the O-ring there, I've got one here, okay. Uh, so these O-rings are actually, or grommets, I should call them grommets. They're actually uh, quite uh, old and brittle and, and quite, I don't know, they might be a little bit iffy with the seal. So we'll have to check very closely when we're finished that there's no slow leaks. Um, you got it, yep. So something that we've noticed, the chiller feed and drain is actually like a very thin, I'm gonna call that nine mil, it's a very thin tubing. Um, when we first got here, we did see that the temperature of the chiller was quite high, it was at 29 degrees. So I think that this is something that can be improved by increasing the thickness of the, the tubing, you can get more flow through the chiller and it can maintain the temperature as is required. As you can see, the water is really dirty. Now, it's not really a problem, apart from the fact that I can't see where I'm putting all the corals, acrylomorphs and rocks back in. So, normally we would put the fish in at this point, but because of the lack of clarity of the water, I'm actually going to fill the tank with natural seawater, get it cycling, so I can hopefully see into the tank enough to somewhat aquascape, and then we'll acclimate the fish in. Uh, the fish are on uh, air, there's a bubbler in there, so they'll be okay for as long as we need. Um, so we're just putting the last of the rock in and then we're going to fill the tank with natural seawater. So I want to say, so far so good. We haven't cracked the tank, it's all in place, there's no leaks with the plumbing. So overall most things are going great, but unfortunately the water clarity is really poor. And it's not unusual for the water to be a bit cloudy because we've just taken the sand out, we've put it back in and all these sorts of things will make the water cloudy. But it does mean that it's very difficult for us to somewhat aquascape the tank so that we can at least have it looking presentable for when we leave. The other issue we've got is because we use a large amount of natural seawater, we have to acclimate the fish. So we're doing that now and the last thing we'll have to do before we go will be to put the fish back in the tank. So it's time to put the fish back in the tank. So we've got the first clown fish and the blue tank. We've got a file fish. Doesn't it look beautiful? Got our two brittle stars. Um, all right. Mandarin, see you in there? Yeah. Okay, and the mandarin. Little splendid mandarin. So we've finished the job, hooray, I'm so glad it's over. We didn't have any big problems. Uh, we've just packed up the ute and the trailer. Let's go in and have one last look at this beautiful tank before we head off. So 
So here we go. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> so this is not how we like to typically end a Gallery Aquatic TV video. However, this is the end for today with this tank for us. We have safely acclimated the fish and the corals into the tank and we've ensured that they've got adequate temperature control, water movement, lighting, everything for their survival is all set in place. The only problem we've got is that the tank is still cloudy and unfortunately we haven't been able to aquascape it. So all going to plan, we will come back in a day or two and get some photos of this tank so we can show you exactly how well it clears up. Uh, as we said, there's gonna be some work done on the aquascaping, so we'll endeavor to get some photos so we can show you a finished product of this tank. But uh, for, for today, that's our video for Gallery Aquatic TV. Thank you so much for all your support. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button on this video, we really appreciate that. But anyway, job done, I'm gonna go home and relax, it has been a big day and a big relocation. So, I'm Cam the Fish Guy, happy reefing.